positive psychology has been a success. Uh, when it first started 20 years ago, uh, there were no courses in positive psychology. Now there are thousands of them. There was no grant funding in positive psychology. Now there's hundreds of millions of dollars of funding in positive psychology. Um, there was almost no literature and uh, uh, now 4% of the psychological literature by our measures is positive psychology literature. There's an international positive psychology association. There must be 15 national associations and there have been spin-off fields, positive education, positive neuroscience, even positive psychiatry now. So very much on my mind as I approach my 75th birthday is uh, what does the future hold? What next? And what is my role in the future? And so what I want to do is outline where I think the cusp of progress in positive areas will be. If you were a farmer in Nebraska, uh, a hundred years ago and the Titanic goes down. You wouldn't know about that uh, for about six months. Uh, but now uh, we are bom bombarded with news, almost all of which is bad. If it bleeds, it leads. Uh, I've wondered often about the epidemic of depression and anxiety in young people. And I think it's at least partly that the news is so bad but strangely enough, even though many people think from the news that the world is worse, by every statistic I know, the world is better. But the question is, given that the world is better, why do people think the world is worse? Now, a lot of this has to do with journalism and with what pays off in journalism. The good life, the positive, is not just the absence of the negative. So what is journalism's vision of a positive human future? Where are the people who are being praised for bringing about a positive human future? And so I think uh, positive journalism uh, is a field that needs support and needs understanding about why people are so con uh, why, if it bleeds, it leads, when there is so much virtue and heroism in the world. 